Dr. Drew, phone number 1-800-LOVE-191. Dr. Drew, board-certified physician, addiction medicine specialist. Victoria Silfstead is our guest tonight. She'll be just a minute or two late. I know that because uh, I got here about a minute and a half before the show began, and I saw her drive past me going the wrong direction. Fantastic. Did you wave? No, she, she sort of was in front of me, uh. and I thought, I couldn't really see. All I saw was a uh, big blonde in an expensive car, and I thought, that must be Victoria. Don't and say big. She might be listening. I mean, all right. Tall. Big, big, a lot of blonde, a lot, lot of, of hair. blonde hair. Lot Looking of hair. a lot of blonde hair yeah. in a uh, lot, of, I, lot of German ca- car, and big's not a bad. Oh, shut up, Anderson. I, I was what talking, talking to a publicist. About? She's been on this show like three times, four times, no, and then she did the TV show it. too, I think, right? I don't remember the TV show, but I, I know she she's did. done the show a couple of few times. Yeah. Yeah. She's nice. Yeah. Anyway, I was hoping she would turn left where she had to turn left, and uh, she kept going straight. And uh, Culver City's really just it. It's a crap maze. It's really, it's a, it's, it's a, it's a rat maze with no cheese. Mm. Just one red arrow leading you to another crappy cul-de-sac. Yeah. So anyway, she'll find her way here, God willing, and uh, we'll talk to her about uh, her new movie. She's in Boat Trip, and... Uh, Cover stuff, magazine, and all that stuff. Drew, tell, tell her she's big when she gets her. Shut up, Anderson. Seriously, she is. She's like six one. She is big, right? But see how she reacts. Girls don't like that. And that's. And you say big blonde. That's fine. Yeah, girls. I'll tell you. I'll tell you the girls who don't like it. The ones who are actually big. They're they're big, big. Yeah, the ones yeah. that are super hot. Where every, every guy in North America wants what to have them. What do they care? They don't care what one big tooth brillo headed radio host calls them. Yeah. Okay, now where are we, Drew? Taking calls. We got a war. Yeah. Yeah. What do you think about that? I was uh, sitting at a Little League game when that all broke out, and I thought to myself... Just uh, uh, I, I, scoping uh, out talent, or was it your kids? No, my kids were playing. I thought I to see. myself, um, I'm so glad I'm here at this game, and that's all... I'm, I, 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 the world shrunk in on me instead of feeling more exposed. You know what I yeah. mean? It's like I, I can be more focused on the game. Right. And more grateful to be there. Mm-hmm. That's all. Yeah. Okay, I, I don't know. What do I know? Well, uh, Saddam has uh, warned us there's... Uh, going to be in an inferno yeah yeah i think that inferno may be baghdad though i'm not i'm not sure what he's talking about no not the right i always i love the threats that's <laughs> my, well, my the favorite threats part. have become so crazy i think to myself no oh jeez, whatever it's the uh yeah you know what it reminds me of the threats remind m- remind me of it reminds me of uh, manson when he's in prison yes he's got a bunch of guys around him and he's about five two and weighs about 80 pounds and he's like I'm going to cut your throat out. I'm going to take your eyes. And it's like, uh, really? Hey, back in the back in the pen, squirrel. Back, back in the cage, yeah. yeah. It also reminds me of a very Monty Python movie. I think it was the Holy Grail when they have the knights. that they, Come on, come on, my fight me. And he, they cut him down. They cut his arms off, cut his legs off. He's like, yeah. yes, yes, come on, bring it on. He wants more. <laughs> yeah, more. Yeah, I know. There's always a, there is some tear reference. And uh, it's usually, you know, will be, uh, I think, the, uh, the, the mother's. And the wives and the daughters uh, are going to be crying. Uh, uh, blood will be pouring from their eyes instead of tears. <laughs> so it's like just some sort of retarded, half-thought-out, drunken threat that never seems to actually work. Meanwhile, they're using, you know, vintage 60s Soviet MiGs, you know, and we're just kicking the ass out of them. I, I, feel, I feel really bad for the Iraqi people. I hope we can get them out I do, of too. But you know what? I feel worse for them having this a-hole in charge for uh, all these years. And as I said to Drew uh, last night off the air, Saddam Hussein deserves to die. He, he needs to die just on a cosmic level. Forget about politics. Just for what he's done to his own people. Yeah, just for his karmic track record. Yeah. All the torturing, all the poisoning, all the dipping in acid. He needs to go down. Just like any horrible human being, whether it's Ted Bundy or Hitler, needs to go down. Yeah. Everybody who does horrible stuff needs to be put down. That's my sort of cosmic justice feeling. It's a reasonable position. He needs a bullet in his head for all the hundreds and thousands of bullets he's put in other people's heads. I mean, he's way overdue. Mm. And the uh, Iraqi people, really, I, I know they're going to celebrate just like... Uh, 
Just like those uh, monkeys and guards celebrated when the uh, witch was dead in uh, yeah. Wizard of Oz. Yeah. All right. Let's uh, talk to Evelyn, who's 17. Evelyn? Yeah. What's up? Um, I, well, I don't know where to start. Um, I don't, I have a question. I don't know if I should tell my dad about something that's been going on. Your dad? Yeah. Okay. Um, my dad has these two brothers. My, I guess they're my uncles, whatever. Yeah. Um, I don't see them often, but when I do, they, um, they make me feel really uncomfortable. How old are they? Huh? How old are they? Uh, they're in their 40s. Okay. And what do they do to you? Um, well, they're not like a shake hand kind of people. They're more like <clears throat> wanting to hug me, like squeeze. Like, Come in and give me a hug. <laughs> and, and, and they make you uncomfortable with that physical closeness? No, I'm not. And they make comments like, you look so grown up. And they'll like smirk and look Hold at on. me. They make you uncomfortable with that physical S Somebody closeness? else got to her way before. Did somebody uh. abuse you or something growing up? Oh uh, yeah. Yeah. What happened? You, you understand when you when you've been abused, particularly like sexually abused, every interaction becomes another revictimization. Yeah. And, you know, we've talked about this before. Whether it's with a victimizer or not. Whether it's with a victimizer or not, you experience it. Remember the last time we had that that rape call where the girl was not oh, really raped. Oh, don't and, we get a rape and, call and, through? I understand. But th this is this is you feeling victimized by people that are not maybe being respectful of boundaries with you, or certainly not being sensitive or tuned to how you're feeling. I don't think you could call them being abusive just yet. They're just not really paying attention. Now, if, if you have sort of a vibe that they could become abusive, that's pretty serious. I mean, you ought to pay attention to that. But I don't need. To, I don't know that you need to start telling your dad that his brothers are abusing you and that sort of thing. Well, yeah, but there's also this thing where um, it was Christmas, and mm -hmm. I stayed over at my grandma's house, and they apparently stayed over at our house with my dad because he had to work the next day. And when I got home, my underwear was out, and my black underwear and it looked like somebody ejaculated on it oh well it was really gross well that could have been old saint nick oh. spilling a little of the crisp oh, milk you left out next to the cookies oh, the night my before god uh all right well here we go uh um, well wait a minute oh hold on victoria self said has uh just stepped into the studio good to see you my dear good to see you guys <laughs> how are you um, very well, thank you. I think I saw you getting lost, uh, by the way. <laughs> I but, always get lost. You smell good, as usual. Yeah? yeah? As usual, huh? Yeah, you always smell good. Yeah, I have new uh, panties on tonight. Oh, see, that's what I like about Victoria. She knows where bread is butter. <laughs> she goes right for the new panties. All right, now let, let's just wrap it up with uh, Evelyn. And we'll, get to, we'll get to Victoria. But uh, Evelyn, mm -hmm. um, who, who abused you in the first place? Um, I was eight. It was like a distant relative from my dad's side of the family. I think it was like his uncle or something. How old were you? Eight. Eight. So your family has a sort of history of being screwy this way? His side, yes. It yeah, was. okay. All right. So you have every reason at least to be sort of on alert around these guys. Just stay away from them. Don't, don't, go, don't ever be alone with them. The uncles are acting weird around them. Oh. And uh, just, you know, I, I realize that you may be excessively sensitive to this stuff, but that's good. You, you, you're, you're, you're staying away from these guys. And, and, and how much time do you need to spend with these guys? Uh, I don't see them often. It's just when I do, like... Just today. don't ever okay. be alone with them. Don't ever be alone with them. Yeah, I'm just kind of, like, growing afraid because my dad's Hispanic, and I'm, like, growing afraid of, like, every Mexican person I can mm, Yeah, know. well, that's a decent impulse. <laughs> all right, but uh, stay away from these two, all right? Okay. All, all right. right. All right. Listen, you could do worse. That's all I'm saying. Got to yeah. stay alert. Got to stay yeah. alert. Victoria Selfstead is uh, here. Victoria has a... Uh, she's on the cover of Stuff uh, magazine. Wow. That is a that is a great-looking picture. You like? Yeah, I'd like to stuff that picture. Speaking <laughs> of stuff. That is wonderful. You can stuff it any time, baby. Yeah. <laughs> Victoria. <laughs> <laughs> You're not attracted to me at all, are you, Victoria? You're cute. A little bit. You got, you got, I got a little something, something going you on. You know, you got something that women like. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Definitely. Mm. <laughs> That's right. That's right. I don't know what, but What's that, money? something. Yeah. <laughs> Victoria is uh, is going to be uh, featured in Boat Trip, which is uh, coming out. Is that coming out this Friday? Yeah. Good timing, huh? Yeah. Perfect timing. <laughs> perfect. And uh, I remember talking to Victoria about uh, being Miss Sweden and about... Uh, remember, we heard all about her childhood. And oh, like, yeah. yeah we, I was here years ago. Yeah, I remember yeah, a that. Of times. It was kind of deep. You were digging a little yeah, deep Yeah, yeah. Here like, we go Ooh. again. Well, 
I remember. I remember. <laughs> pick Fantastic. up where we left off. Victoria yeah. has like uh, some hot sisters, and they used to run around naked. No, no, used to they run around this Shh, little town. Don't ruin it. <laughs> you remember? Yeah, they run around a little town yeah. naked. And the dad was insane. Remember, he was very upset. You know, very, very nervous strict and, and very. Strict, yeah. like, where, where are your hot sisters? Have they come out she's, here yet? She's uh, still over in Sweden, and um, I invited her over though. She hasn't been over yet to visit, but really, uh, we can arrange that. She's not. Is she, I, uh, she got to look about the same as you, right? Kind of, yeah. I mean, I'm a little more curvy than her. <laughs> Maybe that's why I'm in L.A. I don't know. She's she's, she's <laughs> tall, though, like you. She's got those tall, clothes. blonde, yeah. blue-eyed. Yeah. Mm-hmm. She's like the sweet one in the family. I'm really? like the bad girl. You're the naughty one? Yeah, I'm the naughty bad girl. You know, like... Mm-hmm. People like like sister and brothers and sisters and stuff like that. They never really really are alike. People are like, oh my god, you have a sister, and then the meet her. It's like, oh my gosh, she's so different. You know, like. Well, what does she do? What does she do? In Sweden? She works. Victoria's at, lost her accent too. You know that? Really? No. Because yeah, oh, no, compared no. to before, yeah. No, Ooh. it's there. I it's had a there, glass of wine at dinner, and mm-hmm. I'm like, oh. I even I, I even got lost on the way. <laughs> I was like, yeah. calling. Oh baby, I'll see you home. So <laughs> now, anyway. so now. Yeah, what does your sister do over there in Sweden? She works at a private bank, and she has a normal, quiet life, and, mm-hmm. uh, you know, she leads a very <laughs> What was, is there lifestyle. anything different in your upbringing? You, um, how, how, she's four years younger? Six years? She's actually two years older than me, but I've always been, like, the leader. Even though I'm younger, I've always been the most Anything mature, different than the experiences always. you had growing up, or...? Uh, we were both pretty wild and rebellious as teenagers because my, my father was, our fathers were very strict. Did, so. he, did he hit you guys or anything? Was that no, kind of I'm not like hitting, but he's just very strict. We had to like sneak sure, out. You're, to you're killing my chub. No, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. Was it, was he wants it, to get into like really, yeah, yeah, we got spanked every yeah. night. Was it, was it, uh, right was it, was he like religious, very religiously? <laughs> no, they don't have religion, religion over there. Not in Sweden, you're right. We're not very religious. They're he's heathens. very, Come on. Atheist. yeah, he was running and run naked while he was giving me the orders. And so, and your mom was around always? She's the yeah. She's not, I'm more like my mom. I think she's very open-minded, easygoing. She's How does she whatever put up with the, I do, she uh, support me. Where my dad she, is like she supports him. They're quite dead. Well, we'll find there. out something. Relax. See, eventually, someone's gonna get breast cancer, and then it's gonna be a bummer. Uh, and, then, and, and you won't be able to jack off tonight. What's the problem? Well, thank God I took care of that. I, I gave a preemptive strike. <laughs> well, wait, 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 let me see the the mag- the pages. If what you can open them oh, or not. Don't do that. No, 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 I didn't. I didn't use this one. Oh, uh, you need you need the hard. Hardcore stuff. Huh? I'll be using this when I get home. No, I just didn't have access to it. That's like a foreplay. Then you go to the hardcore stuff. Yeah, but then right at the end, right back to this real fast. <laughs> <laughs> you see what I'm saying? That's where I finished. No, yeah. do you? <laughs> oh, Drew knows what I mean. You guys know what I'm talking about. You start off with the softer stuff, like the stuff or the Maxim magazine, maybe yeah, a Playboy. It's all foreplay. Then you slide over the harder stuff for the crescendo, but then right before the fireworks, <laughs> you, you slide right back now. over to the... <laughs> to the softer core stuff. Pow. Sounds like your sex life is really happening. Yeah, it's moving, baby. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's the real thing for him. All right, well, let me uh, let me ask a couple of uh, good questions here. Like, for instance, Victoria has two gold records. Ooh, I did not know that. Figure. Yeah, what? in Sweden. Oh, in Sweden. Sweden. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's a huge difference between having a gold record in America. In Sweden, it's 8 million people. <laughs> so you sold, like, you sold 14 records. And you went, <laughs> exactly. You went gold. gold. Well, what do you, what do you, Sweden do you, has 8 million people? Yeah. Do you have any aspirations? Do you feel sorry for me or something? No, I didn't you know look Sweden, at me like, I didn't know, oh. <laughs> I didn't know Sweden had only, Sweden has only 8 million people? 8 million. It's only, we have very few Swedes to so be nice to us. <laughs> That's incredible. I would have thought like 50 million. Yeah, who the hell? I never even thought about it. I just, I just, the fact that uh, Victoria was uh, Miss Sweden is just like a novelty title. <laughs> you know I mean? Yeah, like right. You're going to get set up on a blind date. <laughs> yeah, that, that, that I can use and get away with a lot of things. Yeah. So, so you, uh, you came, well, we, and we take all the hot ones out of Sweden too. We bring them, we export them into this yeah. country. Yeah. How old were you when you came over here? I was 20, 21. And did you want to come over here, or was it just with the Miss World competition and all that kind of stuff? I was living in Paris and doing modeling, and uh, someone saw me from Playboy, and they're like, well, we want to fly you over for, to, you know, for a test shoot. And I'm like, all right, I'll come over. And then um, I never went back. They just kept me here. And uh, what's... Uh, mm-hmm. So what's going on now? I mean, is it is it you want to start just keep doing features or you keep modeling or I mean, if you had your druthers career wise, what would you uh, do? Well, I I still model, uh, you know, a lot today mm-hmm. and uh, 
acting for me is, is more, I mean, every movie that I've done so far, it's obviously been very typecast. Right. And for me, it's like been given to me literally. It's not like I've gone out, you know, gone out right. there and like fought for a role. Like she's like, you're just do, it doesn't do, uh, <laughs> yeah. well, they... <laughs> doesn't go out and audition. Uh, audition. No, audition. no, I yeah. do auditions. You know, I do that. I've done a couple of independent movies where it's been a little bit more creative than Inga. So, right, um, Inga. <laughs> yeah, well, I've been always playing Inga, which sure. is fine. You know, I I enjoy playing Inga. The twenty-six times she's and, played you know, Inga. Exactly. So, I mean, I don't mind doing that. It's been a lot of fun, but you know, right. Enough of Inga already. You know, well, if I want to keep on doing acting. It's got to be a little more. Well, do you want to? You want to start getting into more challenging roles? Hey, why not? Yeah. All right. Sure. And and uh, and uh, what about uh, any more like uh, Playboy modeling or videos or any of that stuff? You doing any I don't more of that I, stuff? You no, know, I haven't done it ever since um, since I was playing middle of the year '97. And uh, you don't really have to do it again because they they keep on using the same images over and over. I was just on a cover of another Playboy-ish magazine. Yeah, you're like you're just recently perpetually 20 years and, old. Uh, but I was just—it was funny. I got a phone call yesterday from the mansion. It's like, well, we just want to invite you to you have your 77th birthday party. Okay, April he's almost 5th. 80. Can you believe wow. it? His 77th birthday is coming up. I'm like. Whoa! I almost feel like I gotta go to this one. It might be the last, you know. That's how I feel. That'd be good. So, put you know, that down in a card. No, bring no. It over. <laughs> I felt I had to attend. See you in hell. <laughs> no, but um, I mean, I still go to the parties and stuff, and I, I, I love, you know, I love the whole Playboy family, and whatnot. But um, anything weird or creepy over there that we need to know about? <laughs> mm. Well, there's always something. James Conn ever hit on you? Any weird lechy guys uh, hanging around? Don Adams. You know, ever hit when on I'm you? there, I don't. Don you know, happens. I don't see the difference Hangs between. Out. Does he really? Yeah. James Conn and uh, Jack Nicholson. You <laughs> know, when you're there, you're just partying, and you know, mm -hmm. you're kind of. Uh, in the What's up? World. You engaged? What's going on? I'm looking for you. Are you married? Uh huh. What's happening? Who are you yeah, seeing? Yeah, I'm married. Are you married? Yes. Are who are you uh, married to? Um, you don't know? I wasn't married last time, huh? I don't know. Oh, wow, no. Well, last time I, I, uh, I spoke to you, you were, I think you were dating a guy who was like an entertainment reporter or something yeah. like that. Did it's you get same, married to him? Same guy. You got married to him? Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah, yeah you know. we're doing, we're doing, What's he we're doing? doing good. What's he's his doing, name? He's doing sports. He's a sportscaster now. What's his name? Do I know him? Chris. Chris what? Chris Raggy. Chris Raggy. <laughs> Does he ring a bell? He's like, wow. ah! I'm trying to think where he's doing sports. He's it, doing local sports and then for M for NBC affiliate and then he does national sports in the weekends. Yeah, too good NBC. for him. Too good. Yeah. Way too well, should good. Should I tell him that? Yeah, Maybe go I'm ahead. too good for you. <laughs> he knows it. No. He's fine with that. He keeps me down. He knocks me. He keeps me grounded. It's really? good, you know, because I can easily get carried away here in LA, you know. So yeah. it's nice to have someone there to. Yeah. Kind of. Well, what's it like? Like, as a guy, if, if you're a guy and you got a bunch of like you got a bunch of celebrity guys trying to hit on you all the time, right? <laughs> right? It, it have happened. Yeah. I mean, see, as a guy, if you had a bunch of hot celebrity chicks hitting on you all the time and you're married, it'd be tough. It'd be very tough. Now, Drew doesn't want to say anything because his wife's listening, but as a guy, this would be difficult. Get, no, as I'll a woman, so. it's probably marginally easier. They don't have the drive going the same way. Yeah, I'm Maybe saying if, if they flip this thing around... <clears throat> and you, you were married, and you're just married to a uh, quasi-celebrity, but sort of a regular guy, and you're going out, and you're having all these sort of famous females. Julia Roberts is hitting on you. I it'd be hard, it'd be guy, hard not though. to do it. it That's right. But I, I'll tell it you is. something. Oh, uh, when, quiet. But, but listen, you don't factor this part in because you've not been here yet. When, when, you, <laughs> when you are the head of a family... Factor. You know, when, when you were, How about factor? Hey, hey. <laughs> yes, have to Dick factor weed. that part in. If you if you if you have a family, it, it's you you responsible for the well being of a lot of people. What's wrong? And, with and you you know and you and your wife have established a life that you'd be they'd be attacking. You can't bang. You cannot I mean, bang Julia so Roberts one no, time. Not no, even not, once. not once. Not even once. You can not even tease. PJ. What about teasing a PJ? Teasing is fun. Yes, yeah, so you can Teasy, flirt. You can flirt and teasing, fine, but yeah, you know right. and and. And oral. You know? and oral. <laughs> You're pushing it. You're pushing it. All right. Uh, but no, you know, it's... Um, mm -hmm. I don't really... Yeah. Uh, so you've been married for a few years? When yeah, going good? three years three now. Three years. Mm -hmm. you guys, it's good, though. What do you guys you know? talk about? How hot you are and how lucky he is? Is that really... <laughs> Barely. Just, that's the whole conversation. I'm the lucky one in this one. <laughs> <laughs> 
We're turning around. I'm the lucky one. I picture him like driving up the coast and him going, man, am I lucky? And Victoria's like, yeah, I'm hot. Like, man, I'm lucky. Oh, stop. Yeah, I'm hot. That, that should just be the conversation. Yeah, you think so. Yeah. Yeah. yeah because I, you know what? You're not just some dizzy blonde. You're substantial. You're very you're substantial. You're from somewhere else. Yeah, that I'm makes, out there. <laughs> that makes you smart. Oh, yeah, baby. Right, Drew? She's from Sweden. I, I'm just trying to follow she you, She speaks Adam. a couple languages. you got to be uh, smart. I, I'm getting offended. I can just imagine how she feels. What did, oh, yeah, she I loves see, me. See, what see, did we're on the same page right. here. What know? was I your mean, talent in the uh, Miss Miss World competition? Or Miss we didn't, competition? We didn't, in Miss World, in, nope. in the Miss Sweden pie, we don't have to have a talent. Smart. <laughs> Very smart. No talent is your talent. <laughs> exactly. You just have to answer the questions the right way and, mm -hmm. uh, you know, do the right walk and talk, and that's all. Perfect. It's a non-brainer. All right. How tall are you? Then we're going back to the phones. Uh, almost six feet. Almost and, six uh, foot. I'm always wearing, like, Always nice wearing shoes. the boots. Nice and tan. <laughs> nice yeah. and tan. All right. Any uh -huh. tan lines? Uh-huh. Thong. Okay, all right. That's all it. Right. So okay. now you got that. All right. <laughs> at some point, we'll get a quick look at that. Uh -huh. Just at some point. Oh, yeah. All right. Let's uh, hop back to the phones and uh, speak to Mark, who's 29. Hey, what's up, Adam? What's going on? Hey, I had a question. I had a debate with my girlfriend. Mm-hmm. And <sighs> the debate is, can you lose sperm count if you masturbate over an extended period of time? What do you mean over an extended period of time? <laughs> like for 10 years. Like how 10 often? times a day? Yeah, how often? Well, I mean, like, on the average, three times a week. Three times a no, week. No, that's that's that, that, that actually may raise your sperm count. <laughs> there's, a, there's a point at which... Your testosterone. Flow. Yeah, it gets your testosterone up. But if, if, you, if you are sort of constantly cleaning the pipes, then you can drop it down a little bit. But, but probably not enough to affect fertility. But, Drew, what if you're trying to get someone pregnant? What should you do? You should not, hold, yeah, not, hold off two or three days and then... Two or three days? Yeah. But it's you don't have to give it up altogether. It's better if, if you can wait a week. It's better. Oh, yeah. A week? Sorry, Adam. But you're talking about a five day, if you're talking about a five day working week, right? You're not talking about seven days. A weekend? Did I say a week? Yeah, I think he said a week. Yeah, you know, I was. I thinking. You're not talking about <laughs> seven days. Yeah, I you're was. About five no, days. All right, five. Man. I don't want to traumatize you tonight. Five days, okay. <laughs> what about like a week that's coming off a long weekend, like Labor Day? That's the week I'm talking about. Which just about. starts on a Tuesday, <laughs> yeah. so four day. Yeah. Okay. I the week I after New Year. Yeah. I can handle that. Victoria Silvstead is our guest tonight. She is uh, coming up in uh, Boat Trip, the uh, new Cuba Gooding Jr. Uh, movie, which is coming out uh, this Friday. We'll take a little break, and we'll be right back. Hey, everybody. It's Loveline. I'm Adam. That's true. Phone number 1-800-LOVE-191. Victoria Silvstead is in here tonight. Big, beautiful Swedish drink of water. Drink of water? All right. Uh, Anderson, turn her mic on. I know it, it only happens one what? out of every two guests. <laughs> what did he do? There's oh, there I am. It. There's a reason for it. <laughs> How come there's not a reason for it on other radio shows? Because they only have one person on the air. Oh. All right, here we go. Keep going. Adam, don't, don't get derailed here. Right. <laughs> I like how you slipped in big to those cute. All right. All right, Anderson, please, you're, you're, bat, you're, you're 0 for 5 tonight. Now, quiet down over there. <laughs> now, where was I? Dude, this show is so manning to me. <laughs> oh, yeah, here's what I want to say about uh, Victoria. Mm. <clears throat> and Drew, uh, Drew will back me up on this. There's a lot of um, celebrity women and uh, women that get featured in these uh, men's magazines, you know, details and stuff and all that kind of stuff. They, they look real good, and then you see them in real life, and they're a little small and sort of unimpressive. They sort of remind you of, uh, like, a teenage boy in the seventh grade, you know? <laughs> sort of a uh, little flat-chested, rolled shoulders, and 5'3". Five, <laughs> five, I mean, they're, they're like, a, you know, you, you see these people in real life. A lot of guys like that. No, they don't. They like you. No, there's no, me. No, there's a... <laughs> no. there's a lot of women who are, you know, they're attractive women, you know, like this sort of Sarah Michelle Geller kind of thing. And according to these magazines, they all just get sort of lumped in together. But in real life, there's definitely a difference between six foot and uh, boobs <laughs> over here and hair <laughs> over there and ass uh, right in between. And, and, and that sort of, you know, that sort of wafy, sort of diminutive 5'3 chick with the rolled sh shoulders. Am I right, Drew? Mm. Yeah. 
Yeah. yeah. yeah. And yeah. what are you trying to say with this? That I'm saying you're the real deal. Like, <laughs> like there's a lot of these celebrity chicks. I'm just a big girl, you know. There's a lot of tall, nah, I just big, mean a, a lot of them. A lot of these so-called, uh, almost, these sex symbols are almost pinup girls. You see them in real life, and you, well, you go, eh, I went to high school with chicks that look like that. But I didn't go to high school with chicks that look like you. No? That, no. No, really? I would have never left. I'm supposed to be the girl you never next left. door, you know. <laughs> I was still being high school. Playmates are like the girl next door, so. Yeah, okay. <laughs> every, 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 listen, you want to tell you the girl next door is that <laughs> January and February and March and April, every, everyone's the, the girl next door. Please, <laughs> next door to who? Next door to the, to to the Playboy Mansion, that's right. All right, where well, are thank we? thank you. Yeah, well, my pleasure, baby doll. Mm-hmm. All right, and uh, all the sploozers uh, outside wanting to get the... Uh, Autographs from Victoria and the magazines. Yeah, there were, like it was that. a guy who was at my hotel that drove down from San Francisco, and he said he saw him on the website. Yeah. I was going to be here last Monday, and he said, I drove all the way down to see you, get your autograph. So I now have to come all the way down again. I was like, I'm sorry, what do you want to... A BJ? <laughs> yeah. Oh. No. <laughs> Almost felt bad for him. Heart spaz, all loser. Mm-hmm. All right, let's talk to... Uh, Sploozer. Ver- Sploozer. <laughs> That's my new word. Veronica... Veronica. All right. right. Let's talk to... to Go to uh, five. Five, Speak to uh, Kara, who's 19. Kara? Hello? What's up? Um, Actually, I have a question for Dr. Drew. Yeah. Well, for everybody. Um, I just recently... I started having sex um, about three or four months ago. Mm -hmm. And um, I just got this actually the past... The last past month or... Or like three weeks, but every time, like during sex or at the end of sex, I get this huge cramping in my stomach that it's almost like I get hot flashes. After what period of time does that happen? I would say in a, in a minimum of five minutes. Five off. minutes, and yeah. no matter what position you guys are in. Um. Sometimes it's just you know. Mm, no matter no matter what, basically. Yeah. It's, it's and not. do you have any history of infections or anything like that? No, this is my first time having sex. Okay. Have you ever had a pelvic exam? Um. Yeah. It was because I had to go on the pill. Like I was on the pill at least almost like five months before this, and I had an exam and all that stuff. So it's been about eight months since you've had an exam. Yeah, I would say. All right. So it's time to do that again. Possibly you got an infection. Is that doesn't what the ha- cramps are? Could be. Doesn't have to be an STD. Possible you have an ovarian cyst. Possible you have endometriosis. Possible you have nothing. And this is just sort of a something you have to sort of maneuver yourself so he doesn't sort of get into the depths where he can generate that kind of visceral discomfort. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? you got to kind of be attentive to what he's doing here. Why were you on the pill for seven months before you started having sex? Because I wasn't, I wanted to wait like almost a full year with dating him before I did this. Okay. And I, wasn't, right. I wanted to make sure I wasn't going to make a stupid mistake. Anything we should know about him? Yeah. Um, I don't, I mean, he's, I think I'm his ninth person. He's but is he, is he, uh, Hold on a second, we got to talk. <laughs> she's a little caught up in the numbers. Huh. Like she's reiterated a few times, it's my first, my first. His ninth, like anything his we need to know about is his ninth. Yeah, yeah. He didn't come close to asking how many guys. She was on the pill for a long time, sort of worried. She's worried that, you know, he was going to screw yeah, her over. Yeah, I'm getting what you're saying. She's, 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 she's very anxious about she's being not old, but yeah. she, doesn't, she doesn't want to get screwed over. I'm just wondering uh, are you who anxious, screwed you are, over. Are you anxious about being sexually active? No, I didn't want to at all. That's why. But I just wanted to make sure because... I have so many friends in high school, you know, they get pregnant, and I just paranoid. Okay. You're paranoid about pregnancy, then, not just about being sexually active. Yeah. Right. Did you ever get screwed over by a guy? Yeah. How old were you? Dad? Um, it was uh, about a year ago. He um, cheated on me with my best friend. Mm-hmm. Where's your dad? Is he around? Yeah. Okay. He's, like not, he's not sort of an asshole himself? Occasionally. Yeah, when did your dad rape you? We're wondering oh. why you'd pick to be with an asshole, you know, and that that usually comes from dad. Yeah, I, I think I do. Yeah. Probably. Mm. He's not. He's not. I mean, he's a really good dad, but I think sometimes he buys my love. He hmm. buys your what? love. Yeah. I wish my I dad I mean, would have tried that. Literally, you know, like he's got my love because he's a good guy. You know, he does. But he's unavailable. He's unavailable. Yeah, you're saying. Yeah. Yeah, and unavailability is what cheating guys do. Yeah. Guys are not really invested in the relationship. But uh, listen, oh, it's all right, Craig. Get, get a pelvic get exam. Listen, oh, I, I, that, 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 all you people, he's trying to buy my love. That's a saint. <laughs> I, I know just a because saint. you would have got nothing in that department. You think that's such a great thing for a dad to do. But the fact is, 
the emotional investment wasn't there, and she feels it. All right, fine, 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 fine. Uh, that wasn't what she was calling love. about. Son of a bitch. Oh, <laughs> Here we go. All right, all right. She's she's fine. She's got yep. a little little energy. Yep, yep, yep. All right. She's got a pelvic exam. <laughs> did you, your dad didn't try buy your love? Did he? Mm, Victoria? No. 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 Did no. your parents have money growing up? No, everybody in Sweden is pretty equal, you know, it's a... It's socialist. Kind of, yeah. yeah is it socialist? Oh, yeah. We're fine, That's you know, everybody real. has a little house and a little car, but it's nothing... Yeah. But as I remember, you described it as a little town, like a little Alpine Very town. little town, and... Uh, I, mean, I just imagine this little... But big people, little town, but huge people. Big people? <laughs> Walking around in his little house, in the Volvo. <laughs> It's very cute. Skiing and everything. Yeah. Nice. And, and I know for a fact that in, in, in my in Sweden where I grew up, I mean, people start having sex really, really early. Yeah. How old? Um, like 12, 11, 12. 12. They're I mean, big people, though. Because they mature early. No, I don't know. It's still 12. I like but to the go people there. don't really talk about it like, you I know. I thought the parents are sort of okay with it. But they like, don't know. Or maybe they, they know, know, but they don't want to know. I heard they're around 17, 18. They're sort of, okay, it's time. Well, okay. yeah, but I know yeah. or like 12, 13 is very, very common. I mean, no. I'm sure very not. Very common or? or? Well, <laughs> in my... Hold on. Let me talk to Drew. <laughs> yeah. Victoria must have lost it about 12, 12 and no, a half. No, I'm, I'm not 11 saying... 11 and a half. I'm Got it. Half. Yeah. In yeah, she's going a little lower. Yeah. Okay, let's get back to her. I think she's getting suspicious. No. <laughs> what, okay. What's that, dear? Nothing. Something about Sweden again? No, I'm just saying... Big people, little houses. Got I like yeah, that. Yeah, no, I'm just saying it, it's... I think... In general, we start earlier there to have sex. Yeah, Adam over here. So. In general, that's all. That's all I'm trying to Hold say. Hold on, same with you. Yeah. You can ask her about that. <laughs> Eleven and a half. No, I'd say twelve. I'd say twelve. Yeah, well, oh, the guy, come the guy on, must are you good betting? Guy come on, guy. So check it out. No. All yeah. right, cut it out. Mm-hmm. Uh, no, it, it, it's yeah. Sweden has always been known as a sort of uh, sexually progressive. Yeah, uh, progressive. liberated. I, I think I, God only knows though that they are probably still under the same veil of the '70s that we had. You know mm. what I mean? They're still trying to recover yeah. from that. Yeah, BS. yeah, it's, it's just a little slow. Yeah. It takes time over there, yeah. you know. Yeah. Is that uh, you guys uh, big into IKEA over there? You got well, an yeah. IKEA over there? Yeah. All right. We got, got the bookshelves we put together with yeah. uh, IKEA. Allen, we Allen like Allen to Rushes. fiffle with things. That's Swedish, right? Plumbers. Isn't that yeah. IKEA? IKEA is very Swedish, yeah. Is it Swedish? Uh huh. Come on, I, Drew, I, get I mean, hip. that's all we have there. I mean, Ike- all our furniture is IKEA. No, I understand it's that kind of thing, but I always thought IKEA was like. Korean made no, the look. No, it started there, and then okay. and it's very, yeah. <laughs> very popular. All right, but how often do you get back to Sweden? About twice a year. Twice a year? Uh-huh. Your mom's still around? Mm-hmm. Mom, dad, They're my together. brother. My si- yeah, they've been married for 35 years. Mm. Very, what's, your, what's your brother do? He's, uh, he's in high school. Lumberjack. Oh, really? He's a professional golfer. He's, what? he's number two in Sweden in golf in his age bracket. Really? And he's 14. Man. 14. Yeah, he's got a handicap one. He's ama- he's going to be like the next Tiger Woods. That's in his mind. But what's all the the what's the huge age gap here? Was he an accident or? Was you know an what accident? I, mean? uh, I don't know. I think when well, yeah. you know we, we were too much trouble. Two girls too close to each other when we're out of the house and you know yeah, they got busy again. Yeah, they, they didn't have busy, se- the whole yeah. time the girls had no sex. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. Yeah. Oh, You're really curious about I, this that. Is what, this is what we ended up with last time. I was like, oh, my God, her dad. Yeah. Right? We, yeah, I remember that. This is what we left last time. Oh, God, that poor guy. Yeah. Oh, my God. Well, I mean, that's that's the whole thing. Like, as as a dad, you want, you want your, as any parent, you want your kids to be healthy and sort of symmetrical and attractive, <laughs> but let's not overdo it. <laughs> I like my daughter to be sort of a sort of decent looking, but with a hook nose or big ass or some something that's going to slow down the boys just a little bit. You know what mm. I mean? Really, maybe really bad skin all through high school. Like, that's why he wanted us to both to be boys. You know, he he brought us up like guys. You know, like part of the Swedish ski team and oh, training. Swedish and, ski team. Yeah, it was age three. He pushed me out in the slopes. Okay, we must train. We must train. You know, it's like he, t- he spoke to you in English. Well, yeah, but I'm just making fun of his voice there. But he's like a dictator, you know, and so you did, he wanted uh, us to be little boys. You're good so finally got his, uh, his son, little uh, son, oh and God, now it's all about did your, dad su- did your dad suffer with... The- oh, oh God. God, he must have suffered. Yeah. yeah. You're a good skier now? He lost all his hair oh. very quickly. <laughs> Huh? You're a good skier? Yeah. Yeah. I, I competed professionally for 12 years. 12 years? Mm, Swedish ski team. Swedish ski team. Oh. That just sounds like a beer poster, doesn't it? Yeah. 
Miller presents the Swedish, Swedish nude skiing, right? Ski team. It's chicks in bikinis, you know. This <laughs> drunken guys with an 80 IQ can beat off the poster. <laughs> oh, God. All right. All right. Let's take a little uh, break. Uh, Victoria Silfstead is uh, here. She's in uh, Boat Trip, a uh, new movie coming out uh, this Friday. Very wide release. We'll take a little break. We'll be right back. Hey, everybody, it's Love Drew. To please, with the chanting, with the guests, when the show starts. Jesus Christ. Hey, everybody, it's Love Line. I'm Adam. That's uh, Dr. Drew. Victoria Silfstead is uh, in here tonight. Victoria's in a boat trip, and uh, it's coming out this Friday. Also on the cover of Stuff Magazine. Also, and we just had a big discussion about you out in the control room. Um, mm -hmm. That Vicodin suited you. <laughs> oh, yeah. E either that or the trauma of people drilling on your jaw. It took the life out of me. You were uh, uh, universally acclaimed as a delight last week. Yeah. You, what? You were on Vicodin all week? No, no. I wasn't, yeah. wasn't on yeah. Vicodin all week. What, no. Where was your pain? Why did you take it? A little pain in the mouth. Now the pain's in the heart. <laughs> oh. You pansy. Yeah. Oh. As long as it's not in your pants, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah well, don't worry. I'll excise it later on. Adam, you were nicer last week and also funnier. Funny? Nope. Don't tell them that. No, I'm just saying that nice equals funny, so it's okay to be nice. You don't yeah. have to be a dick to be funny. Right. Now, Anderson, <laughs> Anderson over here, who uh, now thinks he's doing news and sports on this show, <laughs> so started off with the traffic, big traffic. Uh, the big comments at the uh, beginning of the night and uh, now led into uh, how it was funnier last week. See, Anderson is uh, the most passive-aggressive person in this building. It's oh, actually yes. very aggressive. Oh, yes. Yeah, or uh, just uh, aggressive. He's aggressive. Over, over aggressive, yeah. 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 <laughs> All right, so listen, I'm not taking source from uh, Anderson, the engineer. So quiet down over there. And Drew, yeah, I'm only riding you when you when you uh, do your unlike. You, Drew likes to engage the guests in conversation right before we come back from commercial break. So the guest is halfway into a conversation, I have to cut off when the mic heats up. We well, just had multiple discussions about it. That's uh, all. Just bringing it up. I haven't done it in a long time. That's, uh, no, you attempt. You usually attempt, then I sort of wave my hand okay. or something. All right. All right, so, uh, no, I wasn't on Vicodin uh, last week. I've never took, the week before? I never took Vi no, it was last week I had the work done, but I never took the Vicodin before I came in here. You were wasted in here a couple no, of times. No, it was one one day when I had the procedure. I was drugged up yeah. that day. But the next day, too, you were so effective. <laughs> well, I wasn't taking any drugs. Really? It seemed it. No, it was it's just... a hangover, huh? Yeah, it was just I had the fight taken out of me. Now I'm back to my old feisty, unfunny self, according to Andrew. Maybe you should keep on taking it, right? Well, <laughs> Get him addicted over here. We're building. What do you got over there, Drew? You got anything? I can score for you. Quiet me down, funny me up, I go get know. the drugs. <laughs> Start bringing that Vicodin in. Uh, I'll, I'll try to keep in mind that you're a heavyweight. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. All right, so let's get to the important thing, which is uh, this uh, movie Boat Trip. Um, Victoria was telling us that uh, she is on the poster in England. <laughs> yeah. And uh, she's riding a giant banana. <laughs> yeah. They know where the bread is buttered over there in England. I like they that. They do, huh? Yeah, we don't even see Cuba Gooding Jr. in a thong back when we got Victoria's Secret on a banana. <laughs> Victoria's Secret. <laughs> that should be what your name, huh? Yeah. Victoria Silfstead on a banana. <laughs> I'll just start calling you Victoria's Secret. <laughs> yeah. It's close enough. Since I have so many secrets left, I mean. I mean. <laughs> so, uh, you're all right with the big banana? Did well, you? I was kind of shocked when I remember I arrived in London. I was in a car, and I look up, and, and, and the, it was a huge poster on the London buses, me riding a banana, and I had never seen I didn't know about it. I'm like, ah! I was screamed. I freaked out. Yeah. And I was like, what's up with the banana? Well, we just thought it was funny. I don't know why. It has nothing to do with the movie. Uh. It doesn't show Cuba, <laughs> Roger funny. Moore, Vivica <laughs> Fox, Horatio Sand, any of the other actors. Yeah. It's the weirdest. It's me riding a banana. That's uh, that's the beauty of uh, and of course of I got you. huge exposure in, in England because of that. I did all the talk shows. I mean, because who's the girl in the banana? <laughs> you know. Yeah. But that's England for you. Yeah, they must love you over there. Mm. And uh, you're going to Russia. I'm gonna go to Moscow to promote Soviet the movie Union? too. I don't know what I'm gonna be riding over there. Yeah, probably. Yeah, uh, probably like some sort of missile. <laughs> All right, let's uh, get to the phones now. Victoria says she has to leave after the first hour, but here's the way I see it, Victoria. I think we have to prorate this because you showed up a little bit late tonight. Which did I? Yeah, you did. Did you? How well, many minutes? That's all. That's all right. Well, here's the problem. You only showed up about four or five minutes late. Mm. 
fashion. It'll be so amazing. we got to make that up. Okay. Okay. But that then gets us into the next break after the hour, which goes 20 minutes after the hour. We can't cut you loose mid-break. Oh. So you understand, we're going to have to keep you for one more break. Oh, really? It's just how it's how the radio math works. You understand? All right. I, I'm going to try to add it up. Wait, wait. Yeah. <laughs> I'd like to cut you loose, but there's, there's rules. Handcuff me, baby. <laughs> Nick? Yeah. Oh, oh boy. Nick, In the car? Is, Unacceptable. Are you driving? Uh, that's, that's some Nick. That's really not working. I'm for, sorry to say. All right. You got another call there, Drew? It says going through a divorce, how to prevent nine-year-old daughter from having problems. Uh, very simple. Two, two sort of simple rules. Is One, uh, do not get her involved in the chaos of your relationship. Do not have anybody splitting her one against the other. It's better now again? Well, let me just I'll answer it. And um, stay very, very close to her. Try to maintain the kind of relationships that you've had when you're in a, in a family unit. Try to keep things as close to that as, as they were before you guys split up. And then get, get your daughter a therapist so she can talk with somebody away from the family about how she's feeling. All right. She doesn't necessarily need a therapist, does she? He wants to know how to prevent nine-year-old from having problems. That's one All thing right. too. Sarah? Yes. You're 21? Mm-hmm. What's up? I was wondering why do you guys have nipples if they don't mm-hmm. lactate? We've uh, discussed this before, right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, don't, uh, all mammals. All mammals have nipples? Yeah. Okay. Uh, so uh, male uh, and other other species have nipples? Yeah. Uh, but but uh, males. We talked about Chimpanzee. dolphins. Someone said they had them. Yeah. Yeah? Uh, all right. Okay. Whales? All right. And uh, also a friend of mine was wondering about male birth control. It's coming. Pills. It's coming. It's going to be out soon. Oh, wow. It's going to be out soon. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Oh, what do you care? Are they going to gain weight, kids? too, and get moody? <laughs> <laughs> I hope. <laughs> Turn it around. All right, it's coming. Things, huh? Victoria, when are you going to have kids? Um, you know about kids? I'm working on growing up myself first, and then we'll see. Mm, yeah, right. A few yeah. more years, probably. <laughs> yeah, go ride that banana for as long as, <laughs> <laughs> as, long as it goes. <laughs> no, I mean the proverbial <laughs> banana. Uh, Nicole? Nicole? Yes? What's up? Hey, guys, what's hey. up? Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> you're 16. Yeah. Well, first of all, I just want to say that y'all are great, and I appreciate y'all so much for what you do. Thanks. And I don't think y'all get enough credit. <laughs> well, that's nice. Thank you. Now, what's uh-huh. up? Well, my question is, um, I want to have kids when I get older, but, like, my mom, she does hit me, and um, I have younger siblings, and, like, I've seen the way that she treats me, like, I treat them the same way, and I'm just scared that if I have kids, I'll do the same to them. Well, why do you go ahead and treat your sisters like that when you know how miserable that is? Well, I haven't done it in a while. I don't really see them anymore, but... Well, <laughs> why, don't, why don't you see your siblings anymore? Well, um, I kind of live, like, um, in my own apartment thing in the house. You're sick in the house? Well, it's, like, part of the house, but it's separated from the house, and, yeah. Far enough that you don't, that you, at age 16, you don't see your family? Yeah, not as much. I don't know. Well, like... All right, hold on there. (laughs) <laughs> What's going on? You you live in like the garage or like a room above the garage that's thirty yeah. feet from the house, so you don't see you don't your have meals sisters anymore. Yeah. Well, we have like a um, like a family dinner like once a month, and I see them then. And wacky. This is wacky. Wait a minute. I, I don't understand what you're talking about. How how do you guys live on a huge farm or something? No, <laughs> we just have like. How big is your house? pretty big. It's like a three-story, and it's like um, 7,800 square Ooh. feet. It's pretty big. It's a big house. Mm. Yeah. All right, so you live in a big house, and you moved off to, like, your own wing somewhere. Yeah. How old are your siblings? Um, I have a younger brother. He's 13, and my two younger sisters are 7 and 10. Okay, so but, like, when I did treat them that way, like... I used to take care of them a lot when I was younger. Right. But, and um, that's when my mom hitting me was the worst, was back then. Where's your and, dad? What's your dad doing? Um, he's here, but 
he's not really. All right, here. listen, Nicole. Here, here's your basic strategy. Where's my bourbon? You're aware that you're you're become an abuser because of the abuse that you've been subject to. Okay, yeah. so. That's the f most important thing in terms of initiating change is being aware, deciding you don't want to do it, and learning to contain that when you have those impulses. Then you need to learn a strategy for helping deal with kids when the time comes that you are taking care of young kids. You're going to have to maybe even get some parenting classes or read about a lot of books or maybe get some help with this professionally. But be that as it may, you're going to have to find strategies that, that do, in fact, work so you don't get so upset and uh, overcome to the point that you feel sort of overwhelmed and fall back on those old strategies of right, abuse. But you're 16. You shouldn't be having kids for a good 10 years. Yes, so that gives you least. 10 years to work on this, all right? Yeah. All right. <laughs> it's never, never satisfying moment in this show. Yeah. yeah. Meow. It's like, meow. Meow. Yeah. <laughs> Scratch yeah. me more. Meow. Uh, I love a girl that does a can't, the can't thing. Meow. Do you do a purr? Do you do a purr? Yeah. yeah, and I obviously scratch marks, too. You do? You do? You use those yeah. nails, huh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's evidence. We have to do something about that. Mm. Put up in mittens on you or something like that. Mm. All right, let's take a little break. Victoria yeah. Shelfstead is our uh, guest tonight. She's going to stay here one more break. Oh, because, yes. Because uh, she's being punished. Because I'm having too much fun with you Having guys. too much fun. <laughs> she hasn't shown me her thong back, a tan line yet. And uh, that's we'll, what we're waiting for. That's right? what we're waiting for. We'll be right back after this. Hey, everybody. It's Loveline. I'm Adam Carolla. That is Dr. Drew. Victoria Silfstead is uh, in here tonight. She's in a boat trip coming out this Friday and uh, on the cover of Stuff Magazine. And I, uh, I fear the honeymoon may be over for us. Uh -oh, Drew. What happened? She doesn't like smoked almonds. So. <laughs> it stinks. That is a deal breaker. That's not very attractive. I, 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 attractive guys like you're sitting there eating smoked uh, almonds. <laughs> well, anyway. Well, what, what would Adam be an attractive snack? Almonds. Like uh, Funyuns or Doritos? What's a more dignified snack for a something man of Drew's Cashews? <laughs> yeah, something more. You don't like smoked almonds, huh? Popcorn? You don't like smoked, period. You don't like smoked, period? No. Well, but Swedish smoke everything. Smoke yeah, fish. Yeah, that's why smoke. I hate it. I'm sick of all the smoked herring. <laughs> so and we don't get any of that here. That's all I fed when I grew up. So smoked we don't herring. Get that. It's disgusting. Wow. Yeah. Little notes. Start feeding wife smoked herring. <laughs> Punishment. <laughs> no. <laughs> That'll be for me. Wow. Wow. Yeah. I guess, yeah, everything you eat over there. What's the weather like over there in Sweden? Where I grew up, yeah. north, north, in North Sweden, close to the Arctic Circle, by the way. So if you can imagine the Arctic Circle, the yeah. winter time, it's about three hours of daylight. Uh huh. Um, and it's cold. It's cold. That's all I can say, it's cold. Really? And I don't know. I look back. I'm like, how did I survive there for for 19 years? I don't. You know, I look back in my my teenage years. And I it's almost like a bla blackout. I can't really remember. <laughs> what was? Because <laughs> it's like a black mm. hole. Um, so Adam, dark. Adam, Oh, no, <laughs> someone's feeding the roofies the whole oh, time. Oh, I mean, uh, darkness. <laughs> so what what'd you do? You went to Swedish high school and... Uh, yeah. No, had she a, did not go to Swedish high school. I could have went to boarding school somewhere <laughs> yeah. out of town or something. No. Not in Sweden, though. Yeah, no, I went done to, that. It's only small, I small country. I did go to local high school. You went to local high school? Mm -hmm. How many students <laughs> in your school? Um, Not many. Were you... 500? Maybe 1,000. Were no, you... A, yeah, something like Were that. Were you uh, class president or a head cheerleader? What do they have? We don't have there? cheerleading there, but they, they do every year. They vote for the nicest girl, the sexiest girl, the sweetest girl, There's the also hottest girl. There's a competition to see who can put together a bookshelf the fastest. Yeah, can. the IKEA award. Yeah. I did not win that, you did not by the way. Win the Ikea award? I got the most sexy award. Oh, you not, did? Yeah. yeah that was even uh, before my. my my uh, curves popped out. And yeah, well, those those aren't real, <laughs> are they? Of course. Yeah. <laughs> of course. Yeah. <laughs> they yeah. feel real to me. <laughs> You're rubbing them like globes. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> it's beautiful. Bouncy, bouncy. <laughs> smart. Very smart. Very smart. Yeah. All right, where were we, Drew? Boat trip, banana. <laughs> Blackout. Blackout. Everything starts with B. No, I'm just saying, all the darkness, you know, I don't know how I survived. Yeah, well, now you're out of that. that I'm out of that, hole. and I, I feel like it's like rebirth coming out here, you know? And you live, in, you live in Texas part-time? Mm-hmm. Why Texas? I like uh, I like the space there, and I like the uh, cowboys. And the... Well, what got you out there? <laughs> a wretched uh, my husband, husband of yours? Husband, oh, yeah. Do you That's have where to he bring lives? him up yeah. all the time? 
Yeah, that's really loving that. <laughs> See, the things face. you do for love. Yeah. How'd you, you meet? How'd you meet your husband? We met out here in LA. Um, he was uh, actually interviewing me. <laughs> Just like we're sitting right <laughs> so now I love talking. Guys. I love guys. Um, and we spent a whole day together. Uh, he did a story for Entertainment Tonight, and um, asked you out at the end of the thing. No, he did not. We kind of hit it off, but we didn't. We did not. Uh, but he was collecting numbers. the dossier. He's like, oh, so who are you dating with? No, oh, but we single. bumped into each other like three times the same week in odd places. Right, so. oh, hiding in the bushes. Yes. Yes. Oh my God. Well, he didn't tell me that, but who knows? No. Kept bumping into each I other. I was stalking him. I was following no. him around. No. <laughs> Drew, calm down over there. <laughs> just we, I just, we know guys. We know men, you know? Yeah. Mm. Now, he was doing the interview and, and, and asking all sorts of uh, questions, wanting to know what your status was. Yeah. You seen anybody right now? Oh, that's oh. so single. I can't believe someone like you was single. But he didn't Putting get as personal as you guys, though. He's <laughs> smart. Smart. Well, they, he's, you know, he knew he'd get another shot. Mm -hmm. He followed you around. This may be it for us. <laughs> you go off to the Soviet Union, get on that big banana, and we'll see and you It's again. all over. Patty, <laughs> you're 16? Huh? You're 16? Yeah. What's up? Um, just recently, like four days ago, I met my sister's boyfriend, who's now her ex. Mm -hmm. And the day after I met him, he dumped her. And then the following day, he asked me out, and I told him yes. And then that night, she told me that he did that, and I don't know what to do. How old's your sister? She's 15. He, You said yes before you knew that she had broken up with him? Yeah, before he bro broke up with her. You sure. said yes before you knew about the breakup? Yeah. He, you, like, broke up with her for me the day after he met me. I, I know. Well, you sound almost sort of proud of the fact that uh, you, you agreed to go out with your sister's boyfriend. No, I'm not proud. I just, I'm, like, I just, I'm confused. I don't know what to do. Well, you, you already said yes. Yeah, let me understand this. A guy that you knew to be your sister's boyfriend uh -huh. came up to you and asked you out. Yeah. And you said yes. Yeah. Why? You, why did you say yes? Well, because I, I like, I really liked him a lot. You weren't concerned about what it was going to do, do to your sister? Well, I, I didn't know they were going out. At the time, and... Well, let me ask the question oh again. Oh, my God, are you <laughs> stupid, yeah. baby? Because you must be hot. You've got to be hot. A guy you knew to be your sister's boyfriend came up to you and asked you out. Yeah. All right. Well, here, let, let me explain. Let me explain, let me explain what... what the, the whole tense thing is has She's, trouble. She like, can't follow. Yeah. She knows... Now she knows it's her sister's boyfriend. Right. But didn't know it at the time. That's right. That's what stupid is. Patty? Yeah. Okay, you didn't know at the time it was your sister's boyfriend. Yeah. <laughs> that sounded more tentative than when I asked her. Yeah? Yeah. Yes, you did? The uh, day after he met me, he dumped her. When you met him and when he asked you out, did you know it was your sister's boyfriend? Oh, no. All right. Okay. Glad that took 20 minutes. All right. And then the next day, she went, hey, that guy you're hanging around with, that was my boyfriend. Yeah. Okay. okay. All now. right. And now you're thinking, gee, maybe I shouldn't see this guy because he's been such a dick to my sister, right? Yeah. You shouldn't. That's right. All right. And how long uh, How long ago did this happen? Like four days ago. Four days. And have you seen him since? Um, yeah. You, you, how old is he? He's 17. 17. And you, you went out with him? Uh-huh. Are you in Washington State or Washington, D.C.? Washington State. And, okay. and what? how was the date with him? Did you get along with him? Yeah. You like him? Yeah, I do. All right, so you're just going to continue to go out with him. He's an idiot. Hey, he's an Jumping. idiot, but oh, what are we going to do? She well, likes wait, What if your sister had a boyfriend you found out that you were seeing her ex-boyfriend <laughs> who had just, this happened, didn't it? Uh, well, growing up, me and my sister were fighting a lot over this, everything. Did this happen? Clothes. Uh, at one point. And did you, did you, would you consider um, seeing, continue I, seeing a guy like this? No. No, you, no. you wouldn't even go that far. I, even I, though you were fighting with I it, hated you, my sister. Even first. though you wanted, even wanting to get back at her, yeah, you yeah. wouldn't. You no, wouldn't not go. that doesn't like now. Yeah. yeah. She, she, you would do it though, Victoria. Yeah. I know you're very <laughs> canny, very petty that way. <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Kitty's got claws. Uh, uh. Hey, hey, Patty. Yeah. Okay. Sounds like you're just gonna go out with the guy. So just go ahead. Well, see, no, I'm feeling really bad about it because me and my sister get along like really well. Good. It's more. That's a much more important relationship than this a hole. Get rid of this guy. <laughs> okay. he, he's listen. He's he's he's, he's just, he, 
He's just not being even sort of ethical. Did he have sex with your sister? Actually, I don't know. Did he have sex with you? Uh-uh. All right. I'm still a virgin. Great. All right. Keep it that way. (laughs) All right. We'll find a new guy. Don't do it the way they do it in Sweden. (laughs) <laughs> yeah. No, wait, nine. wait, wait. <laughs> no. That's not nine. nine it's like 10, 12. 10, 11. Come on. Yeah. All right, Mike? Yeah. They're very progressive over there. You're 22. What's up? Well, I just got a piercing here recently in my tongue, and uh, I had a friend telling me that um, she knew of somebody that had a tongue piercing, and it led to brain damage. You're gay. <laughs> Please. How would that work? What is it she's I have referring to? No idea. All right, the only brain problem I'm, I've ever read about or heard of from tongue piercing is abscess that forms there on the base of the tongue and actually erodes into the brain. That has happened and been reported. But if you do not have a complication from the tongue piercing, if it heals normally, there should be no problem. Because see, I've had it for six months and I yeah, haven't. Yeah, you're, you're fine. You're fine. But it's brain abscess. I think they're referring to. Oh, much fine, oral right. sex? Maybe brain we'll abscess, <laughs> not oral. You like you like a guy abscess. with a tongue piercing? I never had one. Never been with a guy that had a exactly. tongue piercing. Exactly. I never. Exactly. And you never. You don't have any weird <laughs> piercings yourself either, do you? No. Good. I used to with the um, the temporary ones. <laughs> temporary tongue one? Oh no. no. <laughs> temporary what? Cheek one? Clamp on? Nipple? Yes. <laughs> yes. No. With the chain going I in just, between them. I just say I use temporarily, but I don't like to pierce <laughs> Nice. Nipple clamp. I think those are called clamps. I think they're called uh, temporary piercings. Oh. The clamps. I don't know what they're called. Yeah. Yeah. I like to take a... I, what I do is instead of doing the nipple to nipple <laughs> clamp, I use a big woodworking bar clamp and squash the boobs together. Oh, nice. That's sequence. my move. Oh, yeah, I slide. Yeah, I use it for uh, dialing face frames when I'm doing uh, face frame work, time, doing cabinets. I use a use a bar clamp on that. I just go, I'd go from the right to the left and just mash them both together. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, baby. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Nice tight fit for me in between there. You know what I'm saying, Drew? I'm beginning to. Yeah. yeah. An image is emerging. Oh. Yeah. All right, I'm gonna talk to John over here. He's All a 370 right, pound man. Right. John. Hey, what's up, guys? Hey, you're 18. Yeah. You're 370 pounds? Yep. You're fat. True, please. <laughs> I know, I know. And Have you, you wanna... tried to lose weight? Uh, plenty of times. All right. Not working, huh? Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> not, not at all. Are your parents big? Yeah. So, the whole family is. The whole family's big. Do you also have a trauma history or anything where you might be sort of um, using food? Mm, uh, I, I like to like use food to really stress, but I never had no trauma or nothing. All right. Well, let's uh, we we Victoria self said us here. She's a beautiful, tall drink of slender water. What is your secret? Oh, my secret! I make Snickers lots bars. of love yeah. and I dance a lot. <laughs> See, and I told you, hot people. I eat the everything. I do yeah. everything in moderation when it comes to food right. and but drinking. You, but you eat everything, right? Yeah, but moderation. You gotta right. just know, have a little bite of everything. See, see, this is my theory. But you know, it's hot you know, it's in your genes, though. That's you can't right. Have what, That's you know? right. I was just kidding. No, but you're funny. Sorry, baby doll. I just mean, oh, baby. <laughs> no, she, I don't think she's following the point. No, here. what I'm saying is, and what I've been saying on the show, is people have a certain cut. They just, you're a certain height, you have a certain shape. It's called genes. Yeah. It's yeah, called yeah. genes, and that is it. That's it. And you could ruin it. If a ton of heroin and a ton of fat burgers, and eventually, eventually, with a ton of work, you could throw yourself oh, out yeah. of whack. You can burn out, and but yeah, your your out. exercise is you know not eating too many fat burgers and doing some dancing up at the Playboy pa- Mansion, right? <laughs> right. Yeah. That's, John, on the other hand, has restricted his calories to four calories a day, right? <laughs> and runs 600 miles a week, right? And he weighs 300 pounds. And uh, but here's the uh, here's the beauty: is society labels him as lazy. Yeah. Yeah. Come on, dude, get it together. What are you, slob? Oh, they have mm-hmm. some pride. Just got any yeah, respect for yourself? Or just uh, you get those Cindy Crawford videos. Or, or yeah. Jake. Jake uh, no, those videos are good for beating off. <laughs> That's a workout. Yeah. <laughs> There's some That's calories. Start. Yeah. So, John, you've been trying, and it's not been working, and now you want to look at a little uh, stomach uh, bypass. Yeah, that's the, I think it's the only option I've left. I think it's a great idea. You do? Yeah. He's 18, though. He's uh, not young. risky. Or? They're starting to do it on teenagers now. Uh-huh. Really? Yeah. That's just, you got got a bad hand dealt Yes, yet. it is risky. Absolutely. It is a surgery, and it's a big surgery. Lots of complications, hernias, infection, anesthesia complications, uh, chronic diarrhea, and all kinds of lovely stuff. However, 
there are more risks of not doing something with your obesity. Well, what would a doctor say if an 18-year-old guy like John came in? Like, here's what I mean. When they do a sex change operation... They have to live... Uh, yeah, you can't just walk in yeah. and, and get your yeah. door cut off. Yeah. Now, you have to live as a woman for a year and undergo some psychiatric uh, evaluating before they decide you're sane enough to have your door cut off. <laughs> My thing is, is if an 18-year-old guy comes in and says, I want this, wouldn't the guy say... I'm going to send you to a dietitian. I want to see what goes on for a couple months. I'm sure it depends on the center. Obviously, a conservative and wise way to approach it would be, hey, we're going to send you to a trainer, we're going to give you a dietitian, we're going to give it an eight-month trial and see what you can do. Uh, but the reality is by the time people are thinking about coming under the knife, they've done a lot of that. And I suppose mm, some surgeons might, might want some documentation of what they've been through. Yeah, but how but do they really here, Here's the bottom line. A lot of these guys that do the surgery are convinced that the surgery is the only thing that's going to help them anyway. Right. And so... All right, does insurance, threshold. would insurance cover this? Many times. All right, John? Yeah. Uh, cut away. Cut away? All right. All right there, buddy boy. But only only if you legitimately did do the dieting and did do the exercise yeah, and that really stuff made a, didn't a work. genuine yeah, I, attempt. Oh, can I ask you one more thing? Yeah. Uh, Adam, you're God, dude. Thank you. You, you hear that? Heard Victoria, life. you hear that? God. God. No. God. That's yeah. right. Not that pagan god you worship over there in Sweden, a <laughs> real god. Was that American Was god. that a question, John? Yeah. I like the American god. Thanks, John. Yeah, all right. Thank well, you, yeah. Adam. That was a question. Uh, yeah. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Well, it's uh. a little more of a statement. Uh. Let me tell you this great idea okay. I had today. Yeah? Uh-oh. Yeah. You know, I'm constantly uh, thinking of ways to use animals to make uh, our human lives better. I the, came the, with, the crotch sniffing dog. I came with the, uh, the venereal sniffing crotch yeah. dogs. Yeah. 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 I'll explain that to you in the parking lot after the after the show. But this is very. This, here's my new idea. Yeah. Uh, you know, we use dogs to sniff out uh, drugs and bombs at the airport, and uh, police use dogs and stuff like that. But I was thinking, dogs are fine, but you know what's really better than dogs? Crows. These are mean animals. These yeah. crows. Oh yeah, ravens. They're like ravens. Yeah, they're hostile, horrible, horrible animals, and they're smart. Somebody told me they're number two in weight to brain size. Really. Yeah, evidently we're number one. Yeah. Number two is the crafty crow. Shrewd crow. They're yeah. very, and they're, they're mean-spirited. They're kind of stealthy. They're black. Yeah. They, they, they're maneuverable, and uh, they hate everything. Yeah. They really do. I see them. They fly over my house. A blue jay goes flying by, and there's ten crows all chasing it. They have, like, airspace, uh -huh. and they F with everything. Except like, mockingbirds screw with the crows all the time. You ever notice that? No. All right, go ahead. I'm on a roll here. All right, though, go ahead. I won't bother. Here's my point. We can uh, we can train we can train pigeons, which got to be a ton dumber than crows oh, yeah. to be like uh, homing pigeons and all that messenger pigeons. And we yeah, there's falconry and everything. I would like the crows to start being used by the police force. And here's what I'm saying: big troops of them. Yeah, there's like a uh, hostage situation, like yeah. standoff. Yeah. You know, there's this guy was uh, out in Washington or wherever he was. He pulled his tractor into a fountain and he sat there for two days. Yeah, I'll tell you what, get him out of there. My crows. Yep. My attack crows <laughs> would get him out of there. And I don't care if a guy's got a shotgun or a handgun or what he's got. A bunch of crows start flying at you, run. Yeah. You throw your gun down and yeah. run. It'd be like a swarm of bees. Yeah, and so what? One of the crows oh, gets shot. Now, I can't train bees. No, okay. I can't train bees, but that could be next. But I have the crows do idea. my bidding. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Mm. Police crows. They do They do surveillance. No one's going to bother. Like Call them Adam's Pecker Brigade. Drug, <laughs> drug deal going down in the park? No one looks up and goes, oh, whatever that crow thinks. Yeah. Surveillance crows, crows falling. They, they fly 40 miles an hour. They can fly as the crow flies. You see what I'm saying? Oh they don't God. have to take streets. They don't get stopped at signals. Are you saying they can take the route that the crow flies? A as crow, crow flies? can take the routes of the crow as the crow flies. Wow. And they're mean and they're maneuverable and they don't eat much and they don't talk back. To the tune of okay. what would it cost to get a crow to... Pe pennies! Oh. As, as opposed to what it costs to train dogs and new officers, I say we start a uh, evil crow battalion. Yeah. People evil. would be giving up left and right. I mean, you're sitting there, you got a hostage, you're holding somebody, all of a sudden yeah. a bunch of crows start flying at you, you're out, you're running. And like I said, once in a while a crow gets shot, who cares? Who it's cares? a crow! We hate crows. And it's an great. evil crow. Crows are all evil! I never met a nice crow! This is a great idea. I hope someone in law enforcement is listening to my crow battalion. And there's got to be much more use for the as the crows fly. Uh, I mean, it, everyone's always wanting is, that. This is just the beginning. Just the beginning of my use for crows. 
It's time that we start harnessing this crow I, I'm, I'm crow with power. you. I, I've, I've rarely had an idea that I've been this excited about. The, the, the military uses dolphins and sea lions. Huh. Let's start using crows. So why don't you start training one? I'm going to start. Do, I'm starting tonight. All right. I'm starting tonight. <laughs> Absolutely. And they're all over the place. We got enough of them. They, they, am I right? They seem to be like proliferating this part of the country. The, there's, were there crows when you were growing up? Yeah. Did, yes. Did, yeah. I'm. I'm sorry to disagree with you. Yes, there were, but there are more now, and they're bigger and they're meaner. I yeah. think they've been eating a lot of McDonald's food or uh, something, uh -huh. and the hormones got to them, made them into super crows. Yeah, yeah. And they're smart. They're crafty. They're wily. They're wily. That's even smarter than crafty. You understand? Mm. And they're mean. They're just the temperament you want to chase the bad guys. Mm. All right, now you're into me, right? Now I'm Yuri. This guy yeah, is yeah, going yeah. on. Here's the thought bubble of Victoria's Ooh. head. She is crying. I should love top of the hour. I gotta get out of here. Uh, All right, let's have a. Did it look like I was falling asleep? Yeah. No? yeah. <laughs> let's have a quick look at that thong back tan line, and then we'll let you out of here. Oh yeah. Yeah, just a quick, just a quick glance. There's no many people back there. They're not looking. Can we close the curtain? There it goes. It's closed. It's closed. It's yeah. it's one way glass. They can't see this way. Yeah. Well, you're too far away. You All right. Well, let me let me just stand up a little bit. Let me see what you got here. Okay. Oh, okay. well, now I'm not seeing any line, though. Oh, okay. I'm just well, seeing no, him. no, I can't. There's too many people. Well, Let's now you can just show me a little hip there. Like What's that? Pretend like you're seeing No, I'm not going to. I can't pretend like I'm seeing it. <laughs> Come on. Just, Come on. What? Play so this with me crow, here. This crow idea is going to revolutionize put law enforcement, and I just can't. Pretend like I just I can't see a little thong side. All right. Just hey, a little. Leave her, leave her alone. All right. All right. He's, well, he wants to be Howard Stern, you know? Come yeah. sit in my lap. <laughs> Black panties, so I noticed. Thong back, right? Thong. Uh, nice. Thong. Uh, yeah, prove it. Mm, maybe you saw it. I saw a little. What do you want to saw? A BJ? Oh, okay. Matt, what well, All right. not me? All right. Well, I think <laughs> it was you, yeah. BJ? Yeah, that was No. You. All right, let's take a little break. Yeah. Victoria's and out of here. So out of here, guys. <laughs> <laughs> you want I had fun BJ? though. Did you have a good time? Yes. All right, you're going to come back soon? Oh, yeah. Fantastic. It took her seven years this time. Yeah. <laughs> Boat trip, everybody. Check Coming it out. out uh, this Friday, and we'll be back after this. Everybody, it's Loveline. I'm Adam. That's Dr. Drew. Victoria Silstead has uh, left the building. You know, maybe my tech crows could, uh, maybe the first mission would be my ants. I got Your ants. Aunts. Oh, ants. Ooh. Yeah. I like them to go after family as well. That's, that's a good suggestion. But, you know, Drew. using animals, you just thought of another idea. Why, why not just get ant eater in your house? An seems, aardvark. Seems an aardvark. Seems Smaller. In, seems impractical, Drew. Aardvarks. Seems impractical. I have a serious ant problem, Drew. I'd appreciate it if you took it seriously. I, I am. I, listen, I've got the same problem, and all of a sudden I'm thinking... You have an aardvark? I'm thinking no, uh, I'd like don't. to get one. No, you don't have an aardvark. I, is there any other animals that eat ants? So I, my ants are going nuts. They're frenzied. They're crazed. It's like an earthquake's coming is, or something. Is, was tonight an especially weird energy night? Everything is weird because it's, there's a full moon... And, you know, maybe, you know, we just attacked Iraq, and yeah. I'm driving, and the streets are, like, crowded and congested. In a weird, and, and, and people are driving strangely, like, like yeah. they're out of it. Like, yeah. I, I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm trying to get somewhere. Yeah. How come everyone I'm behind isn't trying to get anywhere? <laughs> Ever. Everyone I get behind on the road is out taking a breather. Like, they got into it with the old lady, and they said, I'm going. And they were like, where do you think you're going? Out! And now they just sort of uh, meander, meander yeah. around, like, yeah. uh, where the f are you idiots going? Shouldn't you be going somewhere if you're in your goddamn car? Yeah. I get in behind people that are sort of one eye's on the road, the other's looking up at the full moon, and they're going 16 miles an hour slower than the speed limit, and everyone's sort of congested, but everyone's in a trance. It's like trance no one like. seems to care. I'm doing my usual, which is honking through people. I'm honking at the guy who should be honking at the guy who should be honking at the guy who's not turning right. We had, we had a Little League game tonight, and the kids played. Before they even knew there was an attack, the kids played strangely. There were strange injuries. There were strange emotions from the coaches. It was a weird night. Yeah, there's a, there's a strange energy. sort of energy and rhythm that's going on out here. And I don't know if it's permeating the country or it's just out here in Southern California. But uh, my ants are going nuts. My uh, my crows. I'm supposed to. If we had crows, walk. we'd feel much more secure. Homeland defense. The crows, chase. T uh, you know what, Anna? Here's what I do. 
chase them to go after turbans. <laughs> Anybody in a turban, the, tro- the, the crow dive bombs. I, 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 I train them that the turban, that that's like a bullseye. You go after that turban. That's a mother load there. Yeah. You understand? I'm not sure turbans are what you want, but okay. Well, okay, combination, beard and turban. You go after that. And uh, if guys <laughs> guys carrying a suitcase, you see a beard and a turban, boom, how about, dive bomb. How about the tune, tune to verbal cues? No, cannot have. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that, 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 that would attack everybody who owned a Middle Eastern restaurant in Southern California, Drew. No, we couldn't do that. Have. <laughs> no, cannot have. <laughs> Try this beverage. It's goat based. No, cannot have. No, cannot have. No, cannot have. No, 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 you cannot have. No, no mixing. No, cannot have. Read menu. No, no, get, get fired. No. Yeah. That's uh, anyone who hasn't uh, sampled any delightful Middle Eastern cuisine out here in Southern California could look forward to that. When you ask for a special order. Yeah, give me a half chicken shawarma, half lamb shawarma. No! And this is a woman. This is a 16-year-old woman. 16-year-old? Yeah. No, cannot have! Wow. Yeah, it's great. Really? They're the same price. They're both $7.99. I'm not asking for more of the chicken or more of the beef. Just give me a 50-50. No! Hold the baklava. (laughs) But then you got a big fight about that with them? Well, that's the famous. That's the best one, which is, uh, I uh, let's see, I went to go get a falafel. I'm a fan of the Middle Eastern food. I just I just wish they could staff it with other uh, another nationality. Go ahead and get the Mexicans in there. <laughs> they know how to serve up the food without the attitude. Uh, I ordered a, uh, what did I order? Oh, I ordered a, a pita. And uh, the guy took, uh, the pita was like three ninety nine, And I ordered it and then reached in my wallet and realized I didn't have any cash. But gladly, they took credit cards. So I, I said, uh, well, I got this credit card. What's your uh, credit card minimum? And he was like, uh, ten dollars. No, ten dollars. <laughs> and I said, uh, oh, well, uh, yeah, I'm a high roller. Peter's uh, three ninety nine. Then just charge me ten bucks for it. No, it's like now you, you misunderstand. I'm not telling you to charge me three ninety nine on the credit card. I'm telling you, just go ahead and charge a full ten bucks. Just give me the give me the falafel. Mm-hmm. No. So now the woman next to me goes, get some baklava, pat it out. Pat it out with the baklava. You get you get uh, six dollars worth of baklava. How, how about just ordering four falafel and eating one? I, I probably could have done that too, but now I was having a little standoff with the guy. Yeah. I said, "Wait a minute! You you're telling me you're not going to charge? You're not going to charge me ten dollars for the three ninety nine? He's like, "No, next." And I'm like, "All right, then screw you then." So I didn't I didn't order it. Left. Yeah, yeah, it's the delight, delightful, delightful people. Delightful. I don't know. Maybe the people are good. Maybe it's the ones that go into the restaurant business are evil. I'm not sure. It's a cultural thing. I'm sure everything's good. All right. Let's uh, keep the bombing going now, okay? All right. You ready to move on here, Drew? Yes, I am. Let's uh, speak to uh, Sarah, who's uh, 16. Sarah? Hi. What's up? Hi. I just want to tell you that crows are, like, the number eight smartest bird. Eight, eight smartest sm- bird. What's the like, smartest oh, bird? Actually, out of everything. I was watching the Discovery Channel or, like, something like that, and then that's mm-hmm. what they said. Out of all animals. Yeah, like all of, like pigs, dolphins, and like monkeys, all of them. Yeah, no, yeah. That's, that's my argument for crows. I know. And, and there's, like, there's there's just like and there's a lot of animals. There's like thirty animals, and crows yeah. coming in uh, number eight is pretty good. <laughs> it is. Yeah. They like they like stop in front of uh, cars and drop nuts so the cars will run over them and then they can eat them. That's the just nuts. the kind of brain power I'm going to use against a criminal force here in Los Angeles and yeah. a possible terrorist. Exactly. That's the way to go. I know. You know, they're oh, and people are always talking about how smart rats are and how smart pigs are and all this kind of stuff. <laughs> the lowly crow get does not get its due. Yeah. I think I think they're fly. so smart. People are afraid of them. They're smart that and they'll they're like mean. they'll turn on. They'll, we'll train them and then they'll use their forces for evil. If they had thumbs, exactly. they'd, they'd take over the world. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They also yeah. What else? And they can also like fish and stuff. Yeah. I, yeah. I'm telling you. I got a whole respect thing going for those crows. Mm-hmm. And I also want to tell you that you're like the king of analogies. Like, so good. Thanks, baby. So good. Do you have an analogy for how good I am at analogies? <laughs> I'm not that advanced. You have to teach me. All right. But I'm glad I'm glad you uh, support my crow theory. Oh, yeah. I'll All play. Right. All right. No, for those uh, of you who are tuning in late, I want to train crows to get into law enforcement like we do German shepherds. No smoked nuts. Victoria? Yeah, that was a deal breaker. 
Victoria Silvstead didn't like uh, smoked almonds, which I announced last week were one of life's greatest pleasures. Absolutely. Nothing better in the nut family, for sure. Yeah? Maybe they kicked her out of Sweden. For not liking smoked, smoked products? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think they may run you out. All right, where are we going here, Drew? Jules. We got a little clock problem going on here, How's Drew. That? you know what I'm saying? Ooh. Yeah, it's out. We got a whole board out here. What's it say? Right. Nothing. And we got a flashing light in here. I don't know what's Yeah, that's it's blank. Uh oh. Are we on the air? Yeah. Yeah, we're on. Jules? Hi. You're 16? Uh huh. What's up, baby doll? Um, my boyfriend, who I've been dating for like almost seven months, mm -hmm. um, he like never shows any emotion. That would make him male. Yeah. How, how old is he? He's 18. Mm -hmm. 18? Okay. Uh -huh. And, like, I don't know. That's what testosterone does to the male human. But it like, makes him brood and want to be alone and and certainly not very expressive. Is there any way I can make him expressive? Because, like, I'm really, really open. Like, I'm really in tune with how I feel, and I'm open with, like, how I feel, especially with him. And he's well, here's, uh, here's the question I guess I have for the ladies, which is instead of trying to sort of coax this performance out of him, can you just realize that this is the way he is, but he loves you? and Or maybe this isn't what you need in a relationship, and maybe a different guy would be more appropriate. Maybe. <laughs> Lots of expressive gay men out there be more than willing to date you. What, what do you, you give us an example of what you mean by his being closed out. Like, um, oh, God, now I'm trying to think of a good one. I guess, like, I'll be like, you know... You hurt my feeling, or like I'll try and talk to him about something. Like, like what? Like the other day we were at school and he was like making fun of me in front of my friends, and I was like, "About what?" Oh, uh, I don't know. I don't even remember. It wasn't even important. But I was just like, "That probably, was really uh, embarrassing." I was probably about not being able to come up with examples. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Probably. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, "That really embarrassed me," and he was like, he just got really annoyed with me and was like, "Jules, don't go into this whole thing about." talking to me about all this stuff, you know, I don't like to talk about stuff, da da da, da. And he, like, got really, like, upset about how he didn't want to talk about it. Hold on a second. You see, Drew, when I'm, when I'm, I'm talking about my crow army yeah. and uh, the uh, horrible falafel merchants uh -huh, in this town, uh -huh. the show's moving right along. Yeah. Then we make the mistake of going to the phones. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, and uh, I, the first thing that strikes me, though, is how open and expressive Jules is. Yeah, Jules is <laughs> having difficulty explaining what this guy isn't explaining, but... Uh, okay, uh, look, here's what you can do. If you want him to be a certain way, and you think that way is reasonable, and he will not be that way, then you can break up with him. That's right. It may, it may not be more, more than him not being expressive. It may be just that you guys aren't sort of working, clicking. Okay. You maybe you want him to be some way and something and some feeling different than he is, and that may not be him. Okay. Yeah. All right. Maybe Thank this you. is over. All right, baby doll. Bye. Yeah, good times. I don't know what she thought of that. Maybe it uh, seemed too easy or something, right? Yeah. Huh? Yeah. 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 yeah good times. Brittany. Yeah. You're 13. Yeah. What's up? Well, <coughs> like. When I was, like, five, my cousin, he, like, raped me. How old was he? He's, well, right now, I'm 13, and he's, mm, I think he's 15 now. So he was seven, and you were five? Yeah. And he had intercourse with you at seven? Yeah. Wow. All right. And Weird. I don't know if I put that down as rape exactly. Well. It's, it's something. Yeah, that's what I, that's, like, what part of my question was. It's it's pure sexual abuse. Right. My crows could have uh, stopped this, by the Perhaps. way. Perhaps. That's another job for them. Well, if it's outside. What's yeah. your question? Well, my question was, like, um, if it was rape, I mean, like, I was I was thinking about, like, therapy and everything. Yes, it would be good for you. And, um, I mean, would it be too late for me to do something about it? Or? No, no, but you're just right on schedule. What do, you mean to, what do you mean to do something about it? Well, I mean, like... It's going to screw with your sexual identity. You're going to start... Well, I, I want to know what she means, too. True, I just... Let me ask her. Uh, I ask her what you mean do something about it, and you answer for her. Uh, what do you mean do something about it? I mean, like, tell people. I mean, like, if I told my parents... Like, I haven't told anybody about it because I'm afraid how they'll react. Right. And so, 
I mean, well, they just said, like, well, it's too late now. Or well, I mean, do you do you want to bring him to some justice, or is it just opening up to people? Just opening up. All right. Well, that's not going to hurt anything. It's not too late. The, the effects of that can be healed. Did this happen just one time? Um, no, it happened twice. Two times, and, and but in the same sort of time period. Um, yeah. Are you confused about your sexual identity? Yeah. There you go. Well, if You're you right. want to... See, and I'm yeah. like, I tried, well, like, I never told my parents or anybody, but I tried to tell, like, I tried to ask my parents, like, I was suggesting that, you know, maybe I should get some therapy, and they were like, you don't need therapy. And then I tried to ask my counselor at school, because, like, I'm in the eighth grade, so um, I tried to ask my counselor at school if maybe, like, we can do a session or something, and she, like, laughed at me. <laughs> That's because she's probably not a therapist. Yeah, and she's yeah. probably not used to people, you know, she, they, they, people and coming up to her and asking her who they should take and for by the English way, lit. Yeah, a session is useless. You're going to need a relationship over a long period of time. All right, so, so Brittany, here's the deal. Huh? You're smart. Your instincts are good. You want to get some help. That's fine. This, uh, this is a bad thing that happened to you. But uh, not nearly as bad as a lot of stuff we hear about on this show. Well, yeah, I have a, whoa, I have, like, a lot of problems. That's one of them. <laughs> what else you got going? Well, like, when I was, like, I really had a really bad childhood. Okay. When I was little, my, my grandma, because I'm from a multiracial family, and my dad is black and my mom's Mexican. And so, um, like... My grandma was really mean to me when I was a kid. She, like, called me a nigger when I was, like, four. And, the Mexican like, grandma? Huh? The Mexican grandma? Yeah. Uh-huh. And, um... No, well, that could just been a term of endearment. <laughs> well, and then my dad, he was a heroin addict, so he was never around. Oh, big whoop. Well, so right. there we go. All, All right. right. All right, so plenty of stuff to talk about In there, therapy. Brittany. Yeah. Plenty of stuff. Very but look, much. You're 13. You're smart. You're talking about this. Your your instincts are good. You want to seek some help. You, you're going to be fine, okay? Uh, not if she doesn't get some help. Right. But I know she's going to be fine because her instincts are to get some help. Right. And she's trying to discuss it with counselors and so forth. All right? So, Brittany. Yes? You're smarter than your screwball family. You understand me? <laughs> yeah. Look at you as uh, an alien that uh, came out of your mom. You, you have nothing to do with her. It's fine. Same thing happened to me. Drew punches the mic. So, you need to get some therapy and take care of yourself. And don't act out. You're going to have instincts to act out, all right? Oh, okay. All right. She'll be fine. She's 13. She's, this is what happens when you grow up in these horrible families. You're 13. You sound like you're 28. You sound like you're talking to a 13-year-old. I mean, they've seen everything. They've done yeah. everything. They're yeah. all about heroin and abuse, Fantastic. verbal abuse, physical abuse. It's great. Beautiful. Great. That's just uh, Parents, just start killing yourself. Have some dignity. Or um, go over to Iraq and, uh, and volunteer as a human shield. Here's my plan. Instead of sending uh, Janine Garofalo, well, she can go. But instead of some of these celebrities who want to go over there, Sean Penn and guys like this, I'd like to give myself a little list of human shields I'd like to send over there. Just pack all these horrible parents together, all these junkies and all these abusers. Let's just get a whole, like, uh, just start packing C-130s full of uh, human shields and just bringing them over there. And we'll clean up. We'll do a little weed and seed program over here. And uh, Iraq can get their uh, human shields. Fantastic. And by the way, shield, quite the right word. Human fodder? Well, yeah, what I'm saying is they're, they're, they're more like shrapnel. Yeah. I mean, uh, you got a bunker buster coming at you. Shield, guy lunges at you with a spear. You put the shield ahead. That protects you. I don't think uh, B actors going around a nuclear facility is going to stop the bunker buster. Do you, Drew? No. All right. We'll be back. Hey, everybody. It's Loveline. I'm Adam. That's Dr. Drew. Forget about that phone number. All right. So the clock is out here in the studio. We do have the clock that's on top of the uh, satellite dish over there that's probably not quite you accurate. got this one right here. Oh, we do got that one. And that is about a minute slow. The right. one that's uh, yeah. on the screen. Yeah. All right. And uh, there's a red siren that's going off in the uh, in the booth. We're not sure why. Megan? Yes. Hey, you're 19. What's up? I just had a question um, about masturbation. You live in Laguna Beach? I do. 
I almost I sort of grew up in that town. Did you? Whereabouts do you live? Um, Bluebird Park. Are you familiar that's with that? Yeah, yeah. That's where you had the big mudslide about 20 years ago. Oh, that yeah. thing? And the forest. Or <laughs> the forest. The fire. And the fire came over the hill there. Yeah, it came yeah. over the top there. There. Is nice. that where they're building that golf course? No, no, that's that's way down that's in Newport. Further south? Yeah. All right. North. <laughs> yeah, it's a beautiful area. Uh, oh, I thought that was further south. Oh, which golf course are you talking about? Oh, whatever. All right, there, Megan, what's up? Um, I just wanted the straight answer because I don't really trust anybody. Um, just with masturbation, um, I stopped having sex about two and a half years ago. How come? Because um, I was sleeping with people I didn't know. Ooh. What, yeah. what was, what's up? What happened? Um, I just think it was low self-esteem when I was really young. <laughs> okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, it is it is one of the interesting correlates of, and uh, God's great jokes on humanity, one of his many, is uh, girls with low self-esteem have lots of sex, and right. guys with high self-esteem have lots of sex. Right. And that's how they get their self-esteem oftentimes as guys, and it's oftentimes how their self-esteem is eroded, too, By girls. as girls. Yeah. All right, Megan, so you decided to stop having sex. Now you have a masturbation question. Yeah, I would say that I masturbate, I guess, about like four to six times a week, but I'll masturbate only about two days out of the week, and then I can go about four days without it, and then I do it again. But I, when I start masturbating, then I do it like three times a day. This I is see. Megan the guy? No. Okay. Sorry? No. Oh. All right, you, you squeeze off three, but you only sit down to masturbate a couple times a week. Right. All right, so what's your question? Is that normal? Yes. That's fine. It's You're normal good. for you. Normal for you. A lot of women don't do that, but it's fine. It's absolutely normal. For you, you there, use, there's a much greater range of what women will do. And for you, you that's a, fine. you use any toys? Uh, yes, sometimes, but I don't enjoy it as much as just doing it myself. Yeah, using the tub? Yes, that is a wonderful tool. Yeah, is that your normal MO? Uh, my favorite. Your favorite. But if you're getting three off, that's a lot of trips to the tub. Well, then it would be one in the tub, and then um, I'll read a, a dirty magazine. Uh -huh. Not look at, read. Read. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> I, you, the stories to keep my, to keep my mind no, focused. No, it's not. It's because it, it, it's, it's how different between men and women are. Oh, my God. Women read stories. Men look at pictures. And you know the great thing about women is it doesn't matter if these stories are completely fictional. Yeah. It's just uh, erotic words strung together. <laughs> That means nothing to me. <laughs> Zero. Never, you know, I, once in a while you read the ca caption, you know what I mean? Like Ron Jeremy, ma you know, manages a sizable gut and a sizable tool as he <laughs> gives uh, Minka another shot of his mushu pork. You know, I, I love, they get real racial on these things, too. It's always great. <laughs> Number one. Yeah. Yeah. I like that kind of stuff. It's actually pretty decent writing. Better than the guys yeah. we had at the mansion. Not really. Holly? Yeah. You're 16? Yeah. What's up? Um, actually, um, me and my boyfriend, right in the middle of us having sex, he tends to yell things about his mother. His mother or he's calling you mommy? Well, it's about his mom. He will yell his mom's name, like, out of nowhere. Well, mommy. Mommy? That is weird. Huh? No. It's not weird? No, I don't know. I think it's bogus. I think it's bogus. I don't know. I just think it's kind of weird. It freaks me out. Um, What's he say about it? He just doesn't really think it's a big deal, but at first I thought it was a joke, and now he's just like... What's his mom's name? Cheryl. All right. Nothing funny about that, if it was a no, punchline. I believe it. All right, he's just yelling Cheryl out in the middle of intercourse with you? Yeah. And you you confront him, and he's like, ah, oh, whatever. What are you going to do? Yeah, he just kind of avoids the subject. Yeah, well, it's weird, that's why. Yeah, I know. How old is he? 18. And he does this every time? Um, not every time, but probably two out of three times. Huh. Mike Crows could get him to stop. <laughs> just pick sitting, his eyes out, up probably. On the, sitting up on the foot of the bed, you know? <laughs> Whenever he yelled out a different name other than Holly. Crows. <laughs> They, they, they siege him. All right. Hey, uh, Holly? Mm hmm I don't know what the answer to this is. This guy seems... We never heard this one, interestingly. No. This guy seems very strange. Yeah. Is he I... a strange guy generally? Huh? Is he a strange guy generally? No. Does he talk about his mom outside the bedroom? No. Hmm. Not really. All right. I... He needs to... Listen. 
Yeah. He, it's, it's so distracting and so peculiar. He owes you an explanation. Just, yes. Even just what what are you experiencing? I, I can't go. I can't keep having sex if you're, you're having this strange reaction, unless I understand what's going on here. Yes. You deem it as, as strange. We deem it strange, and you would like an answer. Yes, that's it. Period. Even if the answer is, I don't know what comes over I, me. Yes. I don't know what I'm thinking of. Yeah. But it, it's uh, bizarre at, to me too. At least an attempt at, at an answer, Lindsay. Hi. You're twenty. Yes, I just turned twenty. What's up? Well, um, maybe I ought to give you a little bit of background first. Uh -oh. um, we I have one minute. Baby. We have one minute. All right, and the question. Well, um, I just had a baby. It's almost four months old, and before I got pregnant, or actually while I was pregnant too, um, my husband and I had a very active life. Thirty seconds. And uh, I don't know if he's calling me on the other line right now, but we had a very active sex life. And now that I've had the baby, I tried to make an extra effort to, like, things up and, um, like, dress up for him and, you know, do all the kinds of sexy things that you would assume that men like. Yeah. And um, it's just like he's not as into it anymore. And I don't know. All right. Well, you wasted, a, you wasted three quarters of your call with your long, drawn-out explanation. Yeah. And then, ironically, my explanation of your explanation after yeah. that. So that was a horrible strategic move for you, Lindsay. Uh, I don't know what the guy's deal is. We have to know more. We don't have time to interview right now. There you, you go. You squandered it. Thank you. Well, there's the show, everybody. I'm going to thank Victoria Silstead for coming in here tonight. Where'd that stuff magazine go? I stuffed it in my ass. That's what I thought. No, it's right here. Oh, here we go. You went there? No, I just figured you were taking it with you. Nah, it's all yours, buddy. It's got words in it. <laughs> you know, I don't like this. Well, you have to read those things when you masturbate. Now. I look at words as a four-letter word. Mm. Wait a minute. Word is a four-letter word, Ooh, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. All right. Take a little break. So, until next time, it's Adam Corolla for Dr. Drew saying mahalo. Ikea is very Swedish, yeah. Is it? This has been Love Line. The opinions expressed on this show are not necessarily those of the staff, management, sponsors, or this station. The producer for Love Line is Ann Wilkins Engel. Love Line is a presentation of Westwood One Entertainment.